What's up, guys? It's Cameron, a.k.a. I'm the crazy one here. So we're going to be doing another... This, this is kind of a mix of both, of a topic-based video and a story time video, because it's a topic that I'm so based on, but I will also kind of be t telling stories based on the topic that I'm talking about. So this topic is false accusations, which is something that pretty much everyone has had to deal with, but sadly I've had to deal with a lot of this bullshit throughout the years because there's so many fucking shitty ass people out there that like to make fucking rumors and bullshit about people that try to ruin their fucking lives. People like that are fucking garbage human beings. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, I mean, even when I was younger, back in high school, um, I dated this girl when I was 16 going on 17 or something like that. Or maybe it was the beginning of my senior year. It's hard to remember. My memory is really good with some things and then it sucks for other shit. But um, I dated this girl that was a year or two younger than me in high school. And she was uh, kind of in my friend group and everything and stuff. Um, and I always kind of just thought this girl was like super annoying, but I always thought she was like super cute at the same time. And um, she was friends with my one of my exes and stuff. And I didn't date the, this ex at the time or anything and stuff. But um, but yeah, there were friends and everything and stuff. And we um, I used to hang out at this place called the Teen Center through the YMCA. Me and all my friends would go there and like play video games and just hang out in the music room. Since I do my vocals, I'd be down there and my old buddy Kyle would uh, play guitar while I was doing screams and it's just a fun time. But yeah, no, this girl hung out there a lot. It's kind of how I started getting to know her a little bit and stuff like that. And even though she was annoying, like she had a pretty good sense of humor and, and, and she was cool at the time and stuff. And, um, yeah, we, we dated for a few months. It wasn't a super long relationship, but um, she was, uh, I'm just kind of like, not like super graphic or anything, stuff like that, but it is kind of graphic enough. So prepare your ears. You've been warned. But um, this, this girl was a virgin. Um, by this time, I wasn't a virgin anymore. I had sex with two girls at this point. Um, so I was ex obviously more experienced than this girl was, but not super experienced. Um, I never forced this girl to do anything sexual or anything. Everything that we did was consensual. She asked me to do all of this stuff with her. So, but kind of a th pretty much what ended up happening um, after we broke up, this girl was going around school and told my buddy Armande, which was her ex and stuff that she got back with right after we broke up. And I just had him to shoot me a message on Facebook one, one time. He's like, dude, you fucked her up. Like, she's like saying that you fucking like raped her and all this shit. And I'm like, bro, like, you know me. You know very well that I would not rape anyone like you know it's if you think that i'm that type of person like you you got it all wrong man and like the story that she was going around fucking telling all these people is that like we went into my car and she like gave me a blow job or something like that and i like tried forcing her head down on my penis and was like forcing her to do it or something like that, which never happened. Like I said, and me and her, I never even took her virginity or anything. We did some sexual stuff, but like I never actually like took her virginity or anything and stuff. And pretty much, so yeah, just like in the reality of what happened is she messaged me the day before that saying that like, oh, you know, I've been enjoying the stuff that we want to do um, before we end up actually having sex. I want to try a blowjob or whatever and stuff. And I'm like, are you sure? And 
she's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, I mean, sure, I guess if you want to or whatever. And that's pretty much all that happened. Me and her hung out and she brought it up, even though like we're hanging out like in a public area. She's like, can we like drive somewhere secluded or something like that? And I can try it. And I'm like, if you really want to, I guess, whatever. And we did that and never forced her to do anything. But she went around telling all these people that I fucking raped her and then I forced her to suck my dick, which never did any of that. I'm not that type of person. And just people that are like that and do stuff like that are nasty people. You know? It's just so... That's like the first main false accusation and bullshit rumor that a girl or any one that I was like close with made against me. And then after that, when I ended up dating her friend all these years later, still to this day, this girl goes around and is making up all these bullshit rumors to kind of like this other girl was saying, trying to say that I raped her and that I put my hands on her and I was physically abusive with her when I never did. I did, like, some fucked up shit in that relationship. I remember we got into a really bad fight and she pissed me off so bad that I just, uh, it's not like an actual dresser, dresser, dresser. It's not like an actual, like, dresser, like a wooden one or anything, stuff like that. So that would be hard to flip over, but I have these, like, kind of tote things that you stick together that work as a dresser. And I had a bunch of shit on that and everything and stuff, and she pissed me off, and I just, like, chucked that old thing across the room. That's, that's the craziest this thing that I even did in our relationship. I never put my hands on her or anything, stuff like that. Even if I thought about doing it and stuff like that, never did it. Um, just not really a violent person, like, I've, you know, and then all of my I, COD challenge videos that I do and everything and stuff, and, you know, playing multiplayer with my buddies, you know, I rage when I play video games and stuff like that, and I, I do have an anger issue, sadly, I've been working on that for years, I went through anger management when I got arrested and everything and stuff, but I still just have that issue, sadly, I got that from my father and my mother. But uh, it's a thing I've been working on through the years. But, but yeah, no, she was going around saying that I physically abused her and tried raping her and everything and stuff. And there was a couple of people in my life at the time that cut me off because they believed this shit. And then years later and stuff, when they saw me in person, they're like, oh, like, oh I apologize for cutting you off for all the shit that she said about you. I don't really believe any of it. And I'm sorry that I believed it at the time. And... Some of those people, I accept the apology. Some of them, I kind of just politely told them to fuck off, and I don't want anything to do with them. We kind of went on our way. Um, but, yeah, I really, I didn't deal with a whole lot of shit after that. Like, I had some kind of crappy relationships, but I never had women or friends or anything and stuff like that going around. Really, the only thing and stuff like that that people were going around is... A lot of old friends and everything, stuff like that, were trying to go around and say that I'm, like, a homophobic, transphobic, and fucking racist and all this shit because of my humor, um, sadly, throughout the years and stuff like that. And you guys have seen in videos, I just had someone comment recently, and they weren't offended or anything. They just commented on it um, about my usage of the F slur, which... I know it's something I should not be saying, especially I, I need to watch m myself on the YouTube videos, and I have, I swear a lot in YouTube videos st still, but slurs like that, like words like retarded, and the F-slur and shit like that, I should not use, but um, as I stated many times before, I'll say it again, either if you're new to this video, or if you're watching this video, or if you just haven't seen any of my other topic-based videos, or videos where I've stated this, I'm a very edgy person, I have a very fucked up and dark sense of humor, and I also don't have a filter at all. So throughout the years of having family members and friends that openly use very edgy, 
dark and racist humor, it rubs off on you. So openly throughout the years, sadly, I used like the N word, the F slur, all of this shit and everything, stuff like that. And it's something that I've been trying to work on the best that I can over the years. But um, I had this girl that I've known since middle school. She actually, her and her sister and her family used to live right next to me. And every once in a while, I'd hang out with her and her family and, her, and everything and shit. And then she moved away in middle school out to Texas, and she's been out there since. And me and her were pretty close for a while and stuff like that. We didn't have a full-on relationship, but we kind of had, like, this kind of weird relationship for a while and stuff, like, distance-wise. And... I went to send her a Snapchat one time and I realized that she blocked me and I went on Facebook, Instagram and everything realized that she blocked me and I still had her phone number down. So I called her up and she picked up and she apparently she already deleted my number. So she picked up. She's like, well, who's this? I'm like, who, what the fuck do you mean? Who's this? You should have my number saved. She's like, I don't like, who is this? And I'm like, it's Cameron. Like, why the fuck did you delete me and block me and everything? I don't want to be hostile, but I'm so confused. Like, we for, like, three, four years straight, like, on and off, you know, kind of had, like, almost like a relationship going and stuff. We would uh, talk about sexual stuff. We would just talk about romantic stuff, too. Talking about, you know, if she ever didn't move back to the area and stuff, we got together you know, like, dates we would go on and this and that and everything, and it was nice. And then I'm like, you blocked me. I don't know what the fuck happened. She's like, oh, I ended up deleting you on everything because you made on your story talking bad about BOM and talking about how you don't support it. And I replied back to her before she hung up on me and blocked my phone number. Told her, is like, you took it the wrong way, Sienna. I was like, I've never once said that I don't support B BLM. What I did not support about the Black Lives Matter movement when George Floyd got killed was all these people, either African Americans or white people or just any race, destroying fucking stores and stealing shit. I did not support that bullshit of these fucking delinquents going out and vandalizing and stealing shit and using George Floyd getting killed as a fucking excuse to do it. No, you're just using that bullshit as an excuse to be a piece of shit. And she's like, well, even if it is that way, I still just don't appreciate what you posted. You're a fucking piece of shit. I want nothing to do with you. And now I haven't spoken to this girl in about like four or five years. And stuff, and I tried even reaching out to her about a year ago when I saw that she made a new Instagram. I sent her a message. She didn't even reply, and she just blocked me. So, it is what it is. Fuck her. Um, it's nice, nice when it lasted being friends with her and all those years and everything and stuff. But it is what it is. But um, some of the uh, most recent shit that I had to deal with is. It's been four years ago now, so it has been a while and stuff, but it's still relatively recent. People bring it up all the time for me. Is um, with one of my exes, I got arrested and thrown in jail overnight for um, pretty much like disorderly conduct charges and like battery and stuff against uh, my ex. Which, off the bat, especially if you go on CCAP or anywhere, see that it sounds bad but in reality what ended up happening is i was dating one of my exes and this was the only ex that i ever lived with at the time and i really didn't want to do it i've personally even though i thought about it i've never really wanted to live with my exes the only ex of mine that i freely would have lived with because i love her so much and i still love her till this day even though she's married is my ex Amy, because she was like the best girlfriend I had, and I should have never like fucked my relationship up with her. But I just dealt with a lot of shit when I was living in my first apartment with my 
roommate and shit. And, but yeah, this ex, um, she got fired from her job during COVID because she did like a kind of like a call center type job where she had to like sell shit. And during COVID, they weren't in the office anymore. Only a certain amount of people could be in the office and she wasn't one of them. So she had to work from home, but her laptop that she had was shitty and kind of old. It's kind of slow. So she wasn't getting as many calls as she was supposed to. And they ended up firing her from because of it. So she kind of had to move in with like me and my mom and everything at the time. And that was just terrible. Such a terrible decision. I should have just told her. Like, yeah, I know we're dating everything, but try to move in with your, your mother or see if you can move in with your father or something like that until you find get a new job and find your place because that just drove both of us crazy living together. Like, I'm a relatively pretty lazy person, but I'm clean and I try to get shit done. So for the, like the three or four months that she lived there that time before she got me arrested, all she would pretty much do is sit around and play video games or watch movies or once again sorry to be graphic but i'm just be honest but masturbate it's like all she would fucking do because she like is that's it like sleep video games masturbate like in that order every single fucking day she did try to get on unemployment but during that time it was like height covid times of 2020 20 2020 of that god i can't talk of 2020 so even though she applied for that it took months for her to finally get accepted and get that money and she wasn't really actively trying to look for jobs or anything so i was like the only one in the relationship working and paying for our food and this and that and all this shit so all the food that i was getting for us and stuff because this sounds rude but i'm just being honest my ex that i'm talking about is fucking obese like back then she was still big but not huge she's like 280 pounds which is still pretty big this girl now is probably 330 pounds like she's just fucking fat as shit like she's literally obese like she is so she ate a lot of food so anytime i got food it maybe last us at most two weeks and then i have to go out and spend whatever little money i was making at my gas station job to get us more food that she's just gonna end up fucking eating at some point and she like wasn't really contributing until the last two weeks before she moved out when she finally got accepted for food stamps and got her unemployment so just for three months four months straight pretty much almost i was paying for everything i was the only one working doing all this shit so I was kind of just getting sick of it. And I had to go to sleep pretty early, like midnight at the latest or something like that for my job. And when I would be going to sleep, she would stay up until four, five, six in the morning sometimes playing my PlayStation. So there'd be some times where I would wake up at like 10 in the morning and she'd be passed out next to me or on the couch because she didn't want to come in to disrupt me at 6 in the morning and wake me up. And I'd be cranky, as she, she would say. So she would just fall asleep on the couch in the living room. And there would be some times that she would still be asleep at 3.30 in the afternoon when I would go to fucking work. So, but I had to go to work early this day. And we didn't, didn't have sex for about a week. Because I was just working all the time. So before I go to work, I, I normally worked at 4 o'clock, but they called me in at 2 o'clock that day. Asked me to come in early because it was extra busy. So I was like, sure, a few extra hours of work, whatever, that's fine. It'll be extra money for me. So I went in there. Probably one of the craziest shifts I ever worked at that job. I don't know what it was, but it was just really fucking busy. I don't know if it was holiday time or what it was, but it was just busy. Um, I get back home after work, eat some food, take a quick shower, come downstairs, sit in my recliner, turn on YouTube on the TV, and kind of just chill. 
she comes into the living room area from our little bedroom area we had in the basement. She's like, so are you still going to fuck me tonight? Because one of the questions she asked me beforehand is like, we haven't had sex in a week. Can we have sex when you're back from work? And I just kind of told her because I was getting ready for work. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you want and stuff. I get back from work in seven, eight hours, just tired as fuck because I was busy, just on my feet all day. Normally, we only had to wash the bathroom once, but I had to wash the bathroom there like two different times and took out trash twice compared to the once that I normally did. And because it was just so that fucking busy, it was just it was just terrible. I just wanted to come home and eat, take a shower, watch a couple of YouTube videos and go to bed. So when she asked me, like, are you still going to have sex with me at night? I just looked at her. I was like, probably not. Can we just do this in the morning when I wake up? I told her it's like it's Saturday tomorrow. I don't have to work again until Monday. I was like, let me get a good amount of sleep whenever we wake up in the morning. If you really want to have sex that bad, sure, whatever. She's like, no, you fucking promised to me before you went to work that you said you're going to have sex with me tonight when you got back home. She's just yelling at me, like, making it such a big deal just because I said no that I didn't want to have sex with her tonight. So I just told her, I was like, oh my God, if you're going to make it such a big deal and be a total cunt about it like you always are, sure. She's like, all right. So we go in there and do our, do our thing. I go for, like, about 10 minutes. I'm just, like, tired and I'm just done. I told her, I was like, I just can't. Like, I'm, I need to go to fucking bed. I t tried telling you beforehand, I'm fucking tired. And she just starts fucking crying and stuff after that. Just putting on her clothes, just crying like, Oh, you don't love me anymore. Is it because I've gained weight recently and you don't find me attractive? <laughs> just all this shit. And I'm like, it's not that. It's like, told you like two different times when you asked me if I want to do this. I'm like, no, I'm tired as fuck. I'm the only one working right now. You're not working. All you do is sit at home all day, every single day. You don't do anything. I'm the one having to work and this and that and shit like that. She didn't like what I had to hear. So she just comes, like, turns around, comes at me, smacks me in the fucking face. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? She just starts screaming, just repeatedly, just like punching me in the fucking face and everything. So I just have to, like, grab her arms and try to, like, shove her away from me and stuff like that. Then she starts coming at me again. And this is the only time I ever had to put my hands on a girl. But when she comes at me and stuff, first time I just smack her. I don't even smack her that far, hard or anything, stuff like that. I'm, I'm holding back and stuff, but I still smack her and stuff to kind of just tell her, like, yo, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you just hit me in the face, like four different times almost give me a fucking bloody nose and shit and stuff and that just sadly just me slapping her just pisses her off more and she fucking like pins me to the ground she's trying to fucking like choke me like fucking ki kill me i don't know if she was trying to make me pass out what the fuck she was doing but she's doing all this shit so when she's on top of me doing this i just just like punch her like two times in the fucking face to get her the fuck off of me and stuff and then as she finally, like, let's go after the couple punches, my fucking mom and stepdad come down the stairs like, what the fuck is going on? Just screaming and shit like that. Sky fucking lies to them. Cameron fucking started hitting me and blah, blah, blah. And my mom, Larry, is like, oh, it doesn't look like he fucking started everything. You're fucking on top of him choking him, you crazy bitch. Get the fuck out of her fucking house before we call the cops. So she fucking runs into the room quick fucking grabs her sweatshirt and grabs her phone and runs outside and fucking crying and stuff like that. Like, acting like I fucking started and everything when she started this and I had to defend myself. And fucking, I'm like, whatever. Fuck this bullshit. I go to sleep for, sleep maybe at most an hour or something like that. And at like 2 or 3 in the morning, cops show up at her door asking for me. They ask me a couple questions. Fucking put me in handcuffs, throw me in the cop car, and take me to the fucking police department, and I had to fucking sit in jail for fucking overnight for something I didn't even fucking do. Luckily, I got all those charges dropped over a year ago and stuff now. But sadly, even if shit gets dropped, 
you can still go online, look up my fucking name, and sadly find those charges on there. So sadly, the main accusation now that gets thrown in my face, because anyone can find that shit, doesn't matter where you live, you can fucking live in fucking Jamaica. If you somehow know my name and look it up, you can find those charges on there, sadly. So everyone throws this woman beater fucking accusation at my face now. Like, oh, you have fucking charges out there and stuff like that of you beating the shit out of your ex. You're a fucking garbage human being. But nobody, unless they're close friends to me, nobody fucking asks me what happened. Nobody bothers to, like, ask me, like, what the side of my story is or anything. They just see the charges and think that I'm some fucking crazy, fucking abusive piece of shit. But I'm gonna end that there. That was a long video about a bunch of stories, a bunch of shit. Um, last thing that I gotta say before I end this is... Doesn't matter if it's a male or female, fucking transsexual person, attack helicopter, dog, <laughs> God damn it. whoever, like, everyone will make fucking bullshit up to, to make you sound bad. Like, I think one of the funniest things that I heard that someone was saying about me, and, then, and this person, even though I never dated him, this girl was fucking in love with me for the longest time. And I finally just decided to cut this chick off just because of how fucking crazy she, she became. Like, when I met this girl, like, I even when I was in high school, I almost thought about dating her. But about the time when I thought about dating her, she dated someone else for a while. So I was like, well, she's in a relationship with someone else. I'm not going to even bother anymore. But she was such a nice girl. After high school started smoking weed and drinking and doing all that shit, which it is what it is. I still drink alcohol, as I stated before. I used to be a, a fucking everyday smoker. All I used to do was smoke weed all day, every day before. Smoke weed every day. That was my life. But that's just how it started for her. It was just smoking and drinking here to have fun like everyone did. Because she, uh, But after that... I ended up finding out that this girl started was like smoking meth. Never got addicted to it, but smoked crack a few times. And was just, her life was just going to shit. And what, around the time that she started this, I had no idea that she was doing all this shit. I just thought like, ah, oh, you know, maybe she's just dealing with some shit in life. You know, she had trouble keeping jobs and... Her parents weren't always the best to her and everything, stuff like that. And now, like, she was living with her parents for a while, but they kicked her out because of her being out all the time and drinking and smoking, doing all that shit and everything and stuff. But <clears throat> more than likely, she probably got kicked out of her parents' house because they found out that she was smoking meth. So I cut this chick off, and I blocked her and everything, except for Snapchat, because I never had her Snapchat. But somehow this chick found my snapchat and had me on there and fucking was just going off on me just saying all this fucking bullshit and everything and after that I, ne I never did anything sexual with this girl never dated this girl nothing the most I ever did with this girl because I was pretty close with her was give her a hug anytime I saw her and she was leaving Maybe at most would be like, I love you. But it wasn't even like, I love you. It was, I love you, like as a friend and like, like a sister, like type thing. And after, you know, she went off on me in Snapchat and I ended up just blocking her on there. Like, because she was still friends with one of my friends and stuff like that. And my friends sent me this thing, like, that she made like a week or so later on Snapchat. Like, fuck Cameron Seward. He's a fucking piece of shit, rapist, sexist, piece of shit. Like, oh, and by the way, he has a small dick for any... So to any girl out there that ever had a, had a crush on Cameron, just know that he has a small-ass dick. Like, 
Me and him had sex, and he lasted only three minutes, and his dick was like three inches, like, just tiny, can't let, he's not good in bed, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, what? A, okay, whatever. And, I, like, I ended up dating, like, the girl that sent me the screenshots and stuff like that later, and we kind of made a joke about that at the first time that me and this girl had sex when I was dating her. She's like, oh, it's kind of funny that that girl was uh, making those accusations and making those false rumors that you have a small old dick because you don't. And I kind of just started laughing. I was like, yeah, a lot of people just make up stupid bullshit. I mean, look at all the fucking shit with like these metal artists out there, like C.J. McCreary of Signs of the Swarms and Lorna Shore before Will Ramos joined. This shit going on with Mr. T. Wexify, that his fucking ex was saying that he's a pedo and all this shit, when in reality she's a pedo and was dating this 17-year-old dude. Like, so many people get accused of shit all the time, and sometimes it's true, but lots of time it's just bullshit of girls wanting attention and trying to ruin people's life. And there's been so many accusations thrown against me that are, are bullshit. Some have been true. Like I've stated before, I've done dumb shit, either as a child or as an adult. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But a lot of bullshit that these people make up are fucking bullshit.